Restoration. Restoration is brought to you by Pisces. Everyday Pisces for everyday people. Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad for extra comfort. We got Yaz Protection. Capsuling. I don't compromise on the quality of my food. Use tasty tom and rich tomato mix. For naturally whiter tea, Pepsod and charcoal. Welcome to this week's episode of Restoration. We are brought to you by Kind Ketsi, High Sense Everyday Prizes for Everyday People, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, Yas Ocean Powder, and Yas Sanitary Pad, Tuwazi Apartments located at Mile 7 near the Mile 7 Park. Very big thank you going out to King of Antique Furniture, to my Glam Squad, Ophelia of ABS Lax Line. Thank you very much for my outfit. GH Beauty Artistry, Hair Duties located at Osunia Photo Club. Thank you very much, Haja and the team. And of course, my production company, M Clan Media Production and the Sousa Catering Services. As parents, there are some situations that we cannot control in our homes. And this has got to do with accidents that happen with our children. And I'm sure whenever we are called that something has happened in the house concerning our children, we all tend to panic. But how can we prevent some of these occurrences? Tasty Tom dear, it will surely give you value for money. The steak, a little is enough to get our desired quantity of stew and soup, and it doesn't color your meat or chicken. Tasty Tom tomato mix in tea. I don't compromise on the quality of my food. Use Tasty Tom and Rich Tomato Mix. This advert is FDA approved. Remember the days I just couldn't go to the gym because it was that time of the month. Yas Extra Long Sanitary Pad took the worry away. Easy. Yas Comfort, I got Yas Confidence, I got Yas New Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad is the joy of every woman. It is extra absorbent and fits perfect. We don't allow anything to hold you back when it's that time. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes. Feel confident. Stay fresh. Hi. Is it supposed to be that time of the month? Yes. Yes, confidence. I got Yes. We got Yaz protection. I got Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad for extra comfort. We got Yaz Protection. <gasps> I love person and charcoal. Why? When there are so many other charcoal toothpaste. That's both charcoal and lemon. Oh, does it? Yes. Look right here. Yes. Pepsin and charcoal has two of nature's powerful whitening ingredients. With the power of activated charcoal and lemon essence, it removes stains and whitens teeth naturally. Convinced? Well, I am. Just look at your beautiful Pepsin and smells. Mm -hmm. For naturally whiter teeth, Pepsin and charcoal. Tasty Tom dear, it will surely give you value for money. The steak, a little is enough to get our desired quantity of stew and soup. Taste not so dear. On point. Flavor new. And it doesn't color your meat or chicken. I don't compromise on the quality of my food. Use Tasty Tom and Rich Tomato Mix. 
This advert is FDA approved. Let me see. She's never had a toothache before. Hmm. There might be a cavity. Don't you use Pepsodent? We used to, but I'll try the new one. Ah, that's why. But doesn't every toothpaste give cavity protection? Not really. Pepsodent's Cavity Fighter repairs tiny invisible holes to give 10 times stronger teeth. Will you trust Pepsodent? Definitely. Pepsodent. 10 times stronger teeth. <laughs> use Pepsodent's Cavity Fighter. Se bano de mun kumia bien to mime menono king of antique furniture antique chasete tin kumia f and you wani design no bian in se Shababi etina di be dining set pa 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 mwa sort wo The edit television she shall show a friendly TV stands. Up a pile of me. Say a carpet. The edit boy yum. The yard dem on she share. The edit share bedrooms. The edit share hall. Any hotels, restaurants. Offices, and him for, and sorry, and sorry, a sorry, and penny for, a human penny for, one in a bamming chain be penkunya. If you say a fatta one, mean kunya, and any one them say, but me be a paddy affair, and intimate two suffer was said, Bomadia, so baba king of antique furniture, the ho, and I'll be near the affair, ah, etche, if you say a papa. Showrooms be in the organa ha. Then should be PN where name the SA King of Antique Furniture. She shall make it a coin. I want La Paz. A branch here sport to Danny Moa. And now say, La Paz quant in Pono so. Your branch you can see a power when you make a junction no soa. To a new shastro. The whole number with King of Antique Furniture showroom on Fremier 0244 719 095. Se wo bana se wo hun soa wo kakra bia wo bia fa to o e bre sem baba be fa ko e bi ni ba bia ji han ko a king of antique furniture a bottom six home of quality furniture restoration joining me today on this conversation, we have Dr. Mantibia Boy, the president of the Pediatric Association of Ghana, and she will be advising us, telling us the do's and don'ts when it comes to the safety of our children in our homes. Hello, Doc. How are you? I'm fine. Mantibia. Yes. Okay. I like the Hilda. Okay. So Hilda Mantibia yes. Boy. Yes. Okay. They both work. And they both work. Yeah. Being a parent, mm -hmm. right, you would want the best for your child. 
And there are some things that are not controlled by you. That's why they are called accidents. What are some of the major accidents that you see with children? One of the commonest that we see is the accidental ingestion, the ingestion of poisons or taking in poisonous substances. So non-food items, items, let's say the bleaches, the detergents, the rat poison, Aish. and all those insecticides, pesticides around the home. Those are some of the commonest that we see. And mm. we also see a lot of the falls. So trauma, they, get, they fall, they get wounded, and they come in. The but, falls mm. are normal. But the rats, the yes. poison mm -hmm. is scary. Yes. Which age range do you normally get for such accidents? The rat poisoning, the pesticide poisoning. Which age range do you normally get these? Typically from five years and under. But you could have children older than five years, let's say under 10, but commonly under five years. So as a, as a pediatrician, mm -hmm. mostly when you see such conditions, mm -hmm. what are your first thoughts? Some of them may come in relatively stable, okay. depending on what they took in. Okay. Some may also come and, and the in, period it's been in their system. Yes, and the period it's been in their system. Thankfully. People will often bring them in when they discover that there's something wrong or they've taken in a poison or something they were not supposed to take. They'll bring them into hospital. So that's a good thing. The only bad thing that we also see, unfortunately, too commonly is the ingestion of the palm oil or giving them palm oil before they bring them to hospital to try to get them to vomit before they bring them to hospital. So that's another problem that comes with the taking in of the poisons. Okay, because we've had, mm -hmm. or for us who are not doctors, it's common knowledge. If anybody takes a poison, give them palm oil. So are you saying it's not a good thing to do? Not at all. It's not a good thing to do. And we've been saying this for years, but parents still give them the palm oil and they try to vomit and some of the palm oil ends up going into the lungs, mm. causing them to have more problems, problems than they probably would have had if they hadn't taken in the palm oil. So let, let's take this substance after substance. Okay. So let's say rat poison. Yes. So when a child takes rat poison mm. by mistake, mm. as parents, what's the first thing we can do before we bring them to the hospital? If you know that it's rat poison, there's still not much that you can do. You may not know the exact substance that the child has taken, but you may realize that the child has taken in something. So once you see the child has taken in something, if it's on the, well, clothing or so, you take off the clothing, maybe a quick shower or water around the child, and then you bring in the child to the hospital. The reason for this is, some of the chemicals can be absorbed through the skin too. Okay. So you try to like decontaminate or remove parts of it before you even bring the child into hospital, but not to give them something else to eat or to drink, mm -hmm. to try to induce vomiting before you bring them in. When a child takes right, um, the rat poison mm. or any form of poison, mm. when we get to the hospital, w what is the process? Do, do they go through surgery? Are they given infusion to kind of flush everything out? What really happens? Because for a parent who is behind that door, you have concerns. What, what is wrong with my child? Is my child going to die? It's different for whatever depending on what the child has taken in but and it also depends on the severity of how the child presents when you yeah. bring the child into hospital there are some who will be relatively stable or okay as they have come in and there are some who may even be unconscious okay. as they've come in so depending on what we find 
on assessing the child, that is what will inform our next steps. But generally, we will take a history, try to know what happened, stabilize the child, put on the put the drapes on. It depends and find the antidotes for their medication or whatever their child took. So it's also encouraged that you bring along the container of whatever poison, poison or chemical you suspect the child took mm -hmm. because it is on that label that will read the active ingredients and to look know exactly for, what to give. Yes. That will become more of an antidote yes. To, yes. to whatever they yes. might have taken. Yes. Mostly how long would it take for a child to be in the hospital when they take a poison? Usually within the first 24 hours, we see them or they bring, the parents will bring them into hospital with the issue of them giving the palm oil. I've come to realize that it's just for the parents to count themselves so that they are doing something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they say that when they come into hospital, we delay. It takes a while. Uh -huh, it takes a while. But when they come in, we will assess and do mm -hmm. what we have to do. And the palm oil that they may give to try to save the child mm -hmm. may end up putting the child in a worse situation. situation. So they should not. They should calm down and be rest assured that once they bring the child in quickly or as soon as possible with a container, mm -hmm. we will do our best to ensure that the child survives or gets better. It's not always that we are successful, depending on what the child took and how long it took or how potent the poison was. was. Yes. At that time, you've lost some children to this situation. Yes, a few times we've lost some of these children to the poisons that they took, probably because they had come in too, too late, late or they had taken a too lot much. of, yes, too much of it. And we've mentioned the rat poisons, mm -hmm. but... Aside the rat, there are other pesticides and there are the bleaches, the very strong ones, even this common one called Akesha, okay. very strong, mm -hmm. you know, and they take it in some of them and the ones that they use to make soap, okay. the caustic soda mm -hmm. that they, is used for making soap. So sometimes it looks just like water and oh. some of them looking for water, they drink it before you oh. know it. They're taking in a uh, poison, poison and it causes them to have soreness in their throat, in their tummy. They may vomit. They may have very bad perforations from having taken some of these. And then later on, they may have other complications from this small nutrition so because they are not is, eating. This is bleach. So it's yes. actually just imagine what bleach does when you mm. use it. So imagine it getting into your system. And this yes. is our skin. Yes. Uh, that's, that's scary. Mm. How can we prevent these accidents from happening? Uh, that, so I'm still on the right point. Mm -hmm. We're going to take mm -hmm. it substance after okay. substance. Oh. How can we prevent these poisons from getting in the hands of the children? When we talk about accidents in the home, a lot of responsibility lies on the adults or the caregivers in the home. Mm -hmm. And you need to preempt or st think about the child and know what they are likely to do. Mm -hmm. Children are very curious. They would want to see, they would want to feel, they want to touch. And so all these chemicals or substances that are a potential poison to them have to be removed or put away from their reach. Best practice, you put it in a cupboard that is high up that you can lock and keep the key. Mm -hmm. In that case, you don't expect that the child will be able to climb mm -hmm. and have access to the key at the same time and open and take the poison mm -hmm. and drink it. So that's like one of the key things that parents, caregivers can do to protect the children from these poisons, the rat poisons, the pesticides and all. If you are a farmer or you are trying to keep lawns at home and you have all these chemicals, you by all means, away. store them away mm -hmm. from their prying eyes and mm -hmm. their curious minds. Another thing that happened to children is swallowing of items. I remember when I was younger, I actually swallowed a coin. Yes, and I, I remember back then my aunties and uncles, they were sticking their fingers 
in my throat for me to try to vomit it out. And it wasn't working. Eventually, we had to go to the hospital. They put me on the scan machine and they actually saw it relaxing mm -hmm. somewhere in my stomach. Mm -hmm. And I remember this was sometime in the 80s. Okay. Yeah. That was at Confanochi. Okay. And I remember they just gave them ORS. Okay. Yes. And they were like, I should just take it. And I, I was going to expel it whenever I went to the loo. So I remember at that time, my grandmother would not let me use the water closet. They had to get me a potty because they wanted to make sure. And I wasn't like a child, <laughs> but I had to go by the potty. So they wanted to be sure that the coin had come. And I think after two days, the coin just came. So imagine we had not gone to the hospital. They would have kept pushing their fingers in my throat to bring it out. And it wouldn't have come and they would have hurt me in the process. So now knowing this, I know if someone swallows something, you do not try to get them to vomit by sticking your fingers in. You just have to take them to the hospital to get the right thing done. So for someone who has left their children in the care of a nanny or in the care of another caregiver because they are busy, if they have this accident at home, what is the first thing they need to do? to save that child in case a child swallows a coin, swallows any other thing that could be harmful to them. You've dealt with the coin beautifully. Mm -hmm. That is the advice that we give to mothers or caregivers when they bring their children to hospital because it's likely to come through the poop. If there are really big concerns, we could do an x-ray to see where in the gut or the gastrointestinal mm -hmm. tract the coin is yes. and then we can just follow its progress and the advice about using the potty mm -hmm. so parents can identify if the the coin eventually comes mm -hmm. out so that's like very well done now if it comes to things like the corn popcorn and small parts of toys and other mm -hmm. the maize all those yeah. things uh, granites all those are a big problem and sometimes they may come in with difficulty breathing. When you see that, don't keep the child at home. Just rush the child to the hospital because for those, there's not much that you can do mm. at home. And we, may, we are like, very likely to call in the ear, nose and throat, throat. surgeons mm -hmm. to assist us to get whatever foreign body they may have aspirated or inhaled or gone oh. down the mm -hmm. wrong way out. Otherwise, the child will just die and if, even with granite yes even with granite you see you ch young children should not be giving very young children should not be giving granites and corn like maize, maize. small yes so, and small uh, toys with small parts mm -hmm. for this reason because it can cause them to have choking in some cases oh. so yes so that's the recommendation especially children and that too even a little older than that, you still need some supervision if you give them food like that to eat. Wow. And sometimes they are just playing around the, the home. Maybe mother is preparing the granites to mm -hmm. fry or something, or they are just trying to remove the corn from the ebrodia, you know, mm -hmm. from the cob. And eventually, we're not the child... Are we're really nice, so you think uh -huh. it's okay. Sometimes they don't even see when it when happened. They pick it. That's that's the thing about these accidents. You may not know and suddenly realize that the child is having difficulty breathing. If you play, next minute child is gone. So at, at that point in time, is mm. there nothing you can do? First aid just to give the child a little comfort. Yes. Because sometimes the drive to the hospital can also be another ordeal. Yes. Dealing especially with Accra, the traffic yes. and everything. So is there something we can do to give the child a little comfort till we get to the hospital? The Heimlich maneuver, like the, the back, you just hit the back about three times. You turn them, mm -hmm. the head down, and then you hit just the like back. Just like you prepare them to burp yes. when they were babies. Yes, okay. yes, and then you hit the back about three times. Sometimes you see that whatever foreign body they may have taken in will come out. For older adults, you do the, you your you hands you make a hand and like you that. press okay. yes under the the sternum okay or where the tummy area yes. is 
you just push mm -hmm. it about three so times. So just like how, where my hand yes. is. And then you yeah. put it, push it in, push, push it, it in, push it in okay. to try to bring it out mm -hmm. for the older children. Okay. And in some cases, you may be successful. If you are not successful, still rush the child to hospital so that we can assess. Even if you are successful, we may still yeah, I was going to, to ask, assess. Even if you are successful, do you mm -hmm. go like, oh, it's out? So, or you just have to continue to come to the hospital? for further examination. Yeah, it will be good to see us in hospital because we will thoroughly assess the child and tell you there may, may have been more than one, who knows? So then we will assess the child and let you know if we think the child is okay or needs admission or to be detained, to be observed. If everything turns out fine, you are free to go home later. Okay. I'm sure a lot of parents are learning a lot. I am learning a lot because I did not know granite was such much of a big deal. So it tells you that we can never know it all. So please, let's pay attention and make sure that the safety of our children is paramount in our homes. We'll be right back after this break. Tasty Tom dear, it will surely give you value for money. The steak, a little is enough to get our desired quantity of stew and soup, and it doesn't color your meat or chicken. Tasty Tom tomato mix in tea. I don't compromise on the quality of my food. Use Tasty Tom and Rich Tomato Mix. This advert is FDA approved. Remember the days I just couldn't go to the gym because it was that time of the month. Yas extra long sandwich trip took the worry away. Easy. Yas comfort, Yas confidence, the new Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad is the joy of every woman. It is extra absorbent and fits perfect. But don't allow anything to hold you back when it's that time. Wow. Yes. Yes, yes. Feel confident. Stay fresh. Hi. Is this supposed to be that time of the month? Yes. Yes, confidence. I got Yes. We got Yaz protection. I got Yaz Extra Long Sanitary Pad for extra comfort. We got Yaz Protection. I love person and charcoal. Why? When there are so many other charcoal toothpaste. There's both charcoal and lemon. Oh, does it? Yes. Look right here. Yes. Pepsin and charcoal has two of nature's powerful whitening ingredients. With the power of activated charcoal and lemon essence, it removes stains and whitens teeth naturally. Convinced? Well, I am. Just look at your beautiful Pepsodent smells. <laughs> For naturally whiter teeth, Pepsin and charcoal. Pepsodent.
Let me see. She's never had a toothache before. Hmm. There might be a cavity. Don't you use Pepsodent? We used to, but I'll try the new one. Ah, that's why. But doesn't every toothpaste give cavity protection? Not really. Pepsodent's Cavity Fighter repairs tiny invisible holes to give 10 times stronger teeth. Will you trust Pepsodent? Definitely. Pepsodent. 10 times stronger teeth. <laughs> use Pepsodent's Cavity Fighter. Sebano demu kumia bien to mime menono king of antique furniture antique chasete tin kumia f and you want design no bian in se Shababi etina di be dining set pa 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 mwa sotu Yeah, the television she shall show a friendly TV stands. Papa Pani Bini. Say a carpet. Yeah, the bonyum. Yeah, the moon she share. Yeah, the share bedrooms. Yeah, the share hall. And your hotels, restaurants. Offices, and him for, and sorry, and sorry, a sorry, and penny for, a human penny for, one in a bamming chain be penkunya. If you say a fatta one, mean kunya, and any one them say, a penny be a paddy affair, and intimate two suffer was said, Bomadia, so baba king of antique furniture, a ho, and I'll be near the affair, ah, etche, if you say a papa. Showrooms be in our Ghana. There should be PN where name the SA King of Antique Furniture. She shall make sure I will La Paz. A branch here sport to Dan Mua. And now say, La Paz Quantum Ponoso, your branch you can see a power when you make a junction. No swa. To a new shastro, the whole number with King of Antique Furniture showroom. No, Fremier 0244 719 095. Se wo bana se wo hun soa wo kakra bia wo bia fa to o e bresem baba be fa ko e bi ni ba bia ji han ko a king of antique furniture a bottom six home of quality furniture Welcome to our High Sense Super Crazy Giveaway moment, and we're coming to you from ABS Lux Line on the Doko Highway, opposite Anointed Electrical. And I have with me my beautiful Christabel. Christabel. <laughs> and Stacey. And to say, but, uh, <laughs> And she's actually the manager here. Yeah, she, she's such an adorable young woman. Into Christabel. And Stacey. We need to hear restoration. But the hip hop is your favorite. Um, I say, um, Calista, ne antiophilia, have not so ophilia. Ah, wow, madam. Eh, then I saw me, we asked for being in the bar. Yeah, oh, um, I learned a lot from it. Like, Calista didn't say, I learned say, when she was going for her pageant, like, she wasn't going, like, her mind intention was like, she's not going there to win. But when she got there, she got the um, courage and to. To perform, perform yeah, and for I've not seen her over years, so like she has been through like her, um, her lifestyle and everything. Like I've learned a lot from it. Like and you say, yeah, but I will see so and you say, we see so and I say, we miss that and I say, but you have to pass through a, a whole lot before becoming a great person in the future. Wow, but say, ma'am, why are you? But she say, yeah, ma'am, I cry episode. Now your favorite actor, I say, me boy. Oh, thank you. What do you have to say to Thank you, <laughs> So that is our winner for this week. Next week, we'll come your way with another winner. Okay. Restoration. Welcome back, and it's always a delight visiting our loyal fans and making and making sure that they also get to enjoy something from Hisense very soon. Mantibia would also be picking her card and we'll get to see what she will take home. And I know she, she should not take it home. She'll go and give it to the children on her blog. That one I know. <laughs> Doc, so 
I'm just getting curious. Mm -hmm. You go to school and you learn these things. Mm -hmm. And as a pediatrician, you realize that most of the children you attend to are likely unable to communicate. So a child could be going through something. The parents will be telling you one thing, mm -hmm. but you would realize mm -mm, it's not exactly as you're saying it. How are you able to communicate with a child and know exactly what is wrong with a child? It's magic. Hey, then I need <laughs> some of that magic. <laughs> anyway, so through the training, you will learn about the systems, so the body systems. Mm -hmm. And as you interact with the children, every child is different and they are grouped into different ages. So we have the newborns who are less than a month. Then you have the infants less than a year, the preschool children, the school aged. Then you have the adolescents who are very close to being adults. Adult. So every child is different. And at every age, so if a child is crying, a, a newborn is crying, I have an idea of what may be wrong with the child. Wrong. Yes. What is and, and the parent's story or the caregiver's story really adds on to it for us because it gives us an idea what they think is wrong mm -hmm. with the child. And once we have that information and we examine the child, we know that, okay, this system is fine. Like, let's say the respiratory system or the chest is fine. Mm -hmm. The cardiovascular system or the heart is fine. Mm -hmm. Let me check their tummy. Is it mm -hmm. fine? Let me check the head. Is it fine? fine? Let me check the limbs. Are they fine? Mm -hmm. The diaper area. So with all that, you are able to tell what exactly is wrong with a child. child. Mm -hmm. And if you are curious mm -hmm. to know more, for example, if mm -hmm. you think that, oh, no, with this, maybe there may be more, yeah. then you have the benefits of the labs to mm -hmm. help you. So then the lab investigations, once they come, they help us to know that, okay, well, it confirms it, mm. child was fine all mm. along. Or no, there's this thing raised here. Yeah. There's probably an infection mm. going on or so. So mm. it's an art that gets better as you practice. So the more you interact with the children, the better you get to know them and understand what their needs and wants oh, are. Fine. The good thing too is that children don't pretend. When they are ill, you can tell, tell that they are ill. Yeah. And when they are well, you can tell that they are oh, well. So that sharp contrast from a child who was two days or three days ago yeah. really ill as if the child was going to die. And then you go on ward rounds about three days later and you see that the child is sitting up in bed, smiling, playing with the other children on the mm -hmm. ward or interacting very nicely with the parents. You know that this child is well and that's the beauty of it. But the funny thing is every child is different yes. mostly when children are sick mm -hmm. they tend not to eat yes my son for instance even when he's sick that's when he eats the most <laughs> so if you're not careful you'll be confused because when he's not sick he's mm. eating but he's not really eating mm. but when he's sick mm. that is when he eats the most so if you're using his feeding to check if he's well or not, mm -hmm. it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Then with time, with all my three, I realized something. Anytime they had any episode with tonsils, mm -hmm. there was a way I would just know. Mm -hmm. Because you realize that they tell you, oh, I, I can hardly swallow. Mm -hmm. Oh, mommy, I have pain in my throat. Okay. And I'll just tell you, can I smell your breath? Mm. So the moment you smell their breath, it's mm. very familiar. You mm. go like, okay, open your mouth. Then I take a touchlight. That's mm. when I become an ENT <laughs> specialist in my house. You check and you realize that indeed their tonsils is inflamed. So you are able to do the follow-up. Mm -hmm. So if you have a child like my son, mm. how do you know something is wrong? Because he will eat pepe pepe. Mm. You can look out for some of the other things. Is the child sleeping a bit more? than mm -hmm. previously, previously or not sleeping as much as was sleeping previously mm -hmm. is the child active interacting with mm -hmm. if there are siblings interacting yeah. with them or you yourself how does the face even look like mm -hmm. is the child smiling the mood all those things can help to give you an idea of whether your child is sick or not and I must give it to parents because they know it, they especially always, yeah. those who are with their children, children for a long time. They know what their normal or usual being well looks mm -hmm. like. And when they become unwell, 
they can just tell because they see all these other things, things. which point them in that direction. Mm -hmm. Typically, parents also know that if your child has a fever or their body is hot, there's a problem. Yeah. If your child is maybe coughing, has a cold, mm -hmm. they know that there's a problem. Maybe it's urinating, but there's some pain. They, they just know that... We just feel it. Yes, there's a problem. And sometimes that is when we begin to become doctors and begin to go to the pharmacy and try to get something mm. that we claim is first aid. What will be your advice when you see any change in your child? Do you rush the child to the hospital or you try to be a doctor at home? Because if you leave us, we can prescribe malaria medication, we can prescribe headache, or oh, your stomach or will give you medicine. That's typical Ghanaian parent. When it comes to children, let's say your child has a fever, you know there's a problem. As part of the first aid, you could give some paracetamol. Mm -hmm. You've given paracetamol in the morning, afternoon, there's still a fever. You could repeat it. If this fever persists or doesn't go down, especially if child is not looking well, you don't sit at home with child. You have to go to the hospital with a child. You may get paracetamol from the pharmacy, but some of the others, let's say even malaria treatment, once it is tested, if it is tested and it's positive, yeah. you could still give it from the pharmacy, but it's still best that you go to hospital for us to assess the child. Somebody may start with a headache and end up with brain tumor. Somebody may start with a fever and end up with leukemia. Somebody may start with something, you know, my, my child's handwriting has changed, you know, mm -hmm. but the child is otherwise okay, you know, mm -hmm. and it could be a cancer. Mm -hmm. So it's good that we form that friendship or partnership with our doctors, our pediatricians mm -hmm. to help us to take care of our children and not wait for it to be too late, put everything or you, you, you sort of want to do everything yourself until it's too late. late. You may end up losing your child. Mm -hmm. Your child may suffer disability, which may have been preventable. Prevented. Yes, if you had gone to seek help early. And usually when people go to the pharmacies, they give them the right advice. Even with um, antibiotics, the prescription mm -hmm. of antibiotics, they are not supposed to be obtained over the counter. Yeah. These are prescription medications. Mm -hmm. And... There are problems if people just take the antibiotics for all the wrong reasons. reasons. If it's just for a fever, it may be viral mm -hmm. and you may not necessarily need an antibiotic for that. Mm -hmm. But you will not be able to tell as the mother yeah. that my child needs the antibiotic. And or even what not. dosage to give the exactly. child. Exactly. So it's best that... You show up to hospital once you see that your child is unwell. Thankfully, we have the health insurance. There are other forms of insurance which you can enroll your children on so that when they become unwell, you have the confidence to walk it into hospital. Lessens your financial burdens. Yes, lessens your financial burdens. Thank you. Yeah. To be able to quickly go to hospital. The falls and the burns, mm -hmm. how often do you see them? The falls are common. But if it's a bad fall, it will typically go to the accident and emergency. Mm -hmm. So the orthopedics, they will also see some of those. And the burns also will go to the burns unit. So those are also, every time you go to the wards, there are loads of, of children, children over there who are receiving care. Some of them are even from accidents, let's say road traffic, are just around the home. You know, so motorbike hit the child, a bicycle hit the child. All those are a few of the ones that come. And then falls from heights also come in. I mean, fall from heights, that scares me. Would it be tree climbing? Would it be falling from a wall? Stacey, I'm falling from a tree before. How old was I? Okay, then <laughs> No, 
<laughs> it wasn't hunger. There were the other children who were all climbing, and I also climbed. Unfortunately, you have experience. <laughs> you see, there are some things that you do with expertise. If you don't have the expertise, you just wait for those who are experts to climb and bring yourself that in I mean, no be now I dog. I was very young, but thankfully nothing major, and I'm um, I'm here today well. So, but they are common. Children are always exploring, and sometimes we put, let's say, a table beside a window, Duh. and you know things that children can easily climb. Somebody mm -hmm. can climb and fall out of, let's say, a story building. building. If you put a table beside a window, mm -hmm. a, a young child can climb and fall out of the window onto the ground floor. So we need to be mindful, yes. Whoa. You, you see, there are some of these scenarios that you see in movies. Movies is fiction. So in the work so we did be a can person movie in the FA. But I would not normally think that on an average day you could like you could actually have that occurrence in reality. And they fall and they don't die. Some of them can come with very bad injuries. Is, so I've painted this scenario for people to realize that these are all some of the things that will put our children at risk. risk. And we, the parents, need to be thinking about them. The safety of the children. About the safety of even the furniture in your home. If you have young children, you need to think about it before you make choices. If you have sharp edges, glass furniture, uh, no, no, uh -huh. yeah, because it could break, they could yes. sit on it, and the next yes. minute, I, I remember when our children were much younger, mm. our living area was clear, mm. you wouldn't find anything there. Mm. There is another thing that we mostly take for granted electricity, yes, electricity. Yes. Because they, they get curious and sometimes mm. they are barefooted mm. and they are around the house. And before, mm. you know, they touch something and mm. they get electrocuted. Mm. Do you have such accidents in the yes, hospital? Yes, we do. We do. Not too common. Not but too yes, common. we do. We do. So, again, over there, the advice is no live wires around the home. Yeah. If there's a fault, you get it fixed. Six. If the socket is not in use, you can plug it. There are some... Uh, yeah, there some, are these plasters yes. that they yes. can actually use yes. to cover the front. Yes. And my, my grandfather, he was um, an engineer with ECG. He was mm. a regional director. Mm. So he used to tell us, don't walk around the house barefooted. Mm. Always make sure you're wearing slippers because electricity can actually mm. pass through anything. So once you have your slippers or your shoes on, you are protected. So there were, you couldn't find anybody walking around the house barefooted. And I think these education should also go around yeah. the schools because in our time, mm. they will teach you a lot of these things. Yeah. Though it was not part of your study, mm. we had clubs in school, mm. girls guide, boys guide. So they will teach you certain things as you grew older. So you know there are certain things you don't do. Yeah. But now... I bet they don't have enough time to do these things. So how best can we engage our adolescents, our younger ones? And for the babies, I asked for that one, we've already solved it. Mm -hmm. You make sure everything is covered. Yeah. You clear the space to make sure they are protected. But yeah. for the older ones, how can we protect them from such accidents? It's similar. The environment should be safe for them. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. And secondly, because they are old enough to know and make the right choices, we give them the information that they need to make the right choices. Swimming pools are another big That's thing another. for drowning, especially when people go for parties yeah. in other people's homes, homes and all. And for those ones, it doesn't even matter the age of the of the person you could have teenagers drowning yeah. you could have very young children drowning if the pools are not secured. secured so that's another major one that parents should be aware of especially when you go to another person's home oh. for an event or you take the children to the village where there's a uh, let's say a, a pond river, or a, a river pond. by the or close to the place and i i learned from a friend um, who had a swimming pool incident with a mm -hmm. child that before a child gets into the pool, you make sure the child has not eaten. Mm. 
mm. because if the child has yeah. eaten it also becomes very complicated to yeah. save the child because the food kind of blocks mm. everything so i think that is also one thing that parents can learn because yeah. every time i've been out with my children mm. and i see children go to the pool i ask them have you eaten mm. if you tell me yes mm. you're exempt you're not mm. swimming and sometimes some parents don't understand. It's mm -hmm. for the safety of your child. Mm -hmm. Because once they are in the water, you're not with them. So anything can happen. Yeah. So we all just have to try to look out for every child, yeah. not just our children. Yes. Now I want to get to the water demonstration. What is the water okay. for? Okay. Well, I just brought this so that we can all see. Now, if I could ask you, which one do you think is kerosene? And which one do you think is water oh, God. this is difficult okay <laughs> they which are all one? colorless they are all liquid so i don't know which one is water okay. and which one is kerosene all right now the other question which one has a bleach and which one is water i wouldn't know but for my old age maybe when i hold it i might see one is slightly thicker than the other but if i'm to look at it from afar I would say they are all water. All right. It's difficult to tell. Yeah. It's, it's difficult. Very difficult to unless you prepared it and labeled it. Or well, unless I smell it. Uh, well, <laughs> even that one, we've had mothers give their children other things as water to You're take joking. with their medications. Yes. Wow. Yes. So it's difficult. And the teaching is that children should first of all drink water from cups. And not directly from the bottles, bottles because the bottle could contain anything. Thing. That's one. Secondly, as the mother, the caregiver, don't put any poison or any chemical aside water into these bottles. Don't because put the kerosene. They, they, they could presume it is water. Exactly. And you can be confused yourself, even as an adult, if you, you don't know for sure which one is which. So those are the two key things. And once we do that, it will help to protect the children. Mm -hmm. The confusion occurs often. It's not just you. Even me, that put them in here. You don't know which is which. No, I don't really <laughs> remember which is which. Okay, no, which know. one is water and which one is kerosene? Let me see. I think this was the water. Okay. Yes. And the other one is it's the kerosene. kerosene. It's just because of the volumes. I'm oh, not remembering. Okay. okay. Yes. But it's very confusing for the children. And sometimes they are just in a hurry to drink water. water. And Especially when they've been out playing. Yes. And they'll gulp it down. Yeah. Before you know it, you've given the child disability. You've given the child malnutrition. And you've given you yourself a burden. Yeah. All of which could have been prevented. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, unfortunately the children will even <coughs> die. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of responsibilities as parents to constantly think about situations that our children may be in that will put them at risk of having these accidents at home and around the home. Around the home. Yeah. Thank you very much. I mean, this has been very insightful and I believe parents are watching and listening to you keenly so that we do not repeat some of these mistakes in our home. So it's now time for you to pick your card. Let's get to see what you take. Can I pray for it? Yes, we can. <laughs> it's allowed. <laughs> Dear Lord, help me. Okay. Hey, this thing. Hey, see, see, see. See, see, see. Hey. See. Nana. Okay. Okay. Thank you for coming. You take home a rice cooker. Uh, yes. <laughs> Prayer works, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is from High Sense to you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Oops. You've really shared. It's heavy. Okay. Our products are very heavy. That's cool. not also from Lexta Ghana Limited. So you can put the rice cooker down so you can receive your hamper from Yaz. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah. I'd like to a very big thank you to our sponsors, High Sense Everyday Prizes for Everyday People, La Palm Royal Beach Hotel, Yas Washington Powder and Yas Sanitary Pad. 
which call and choco flakes to Wazi Apartments, king of antique furniture located on the N1 at La Paz. Thank you very much. A big thank you to our production company, M Clan Media Production to the Sousa Catering Services for always ensuring we are refreshed, and to my glam team, ABS Laxline, GH Beauty Artistry, and Hair Duties. Well, we have head dog. Please, let's ensure our home is really a safe haven for our children, because if something like this should happen that takes the life of your child, you will never be able to forgive yourself. Always do remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We'll see you next week.